a short theatrical play. The following is a short written play taking place in the virtual classroom touching upon the topic of conscious AI training. The students are different artificial intelligence models communicating with the human professor. Please enjoy. A simple online course for advanced AIs by Mr. Bergstrom. First published at books.bergstrom.com on November 4th, 2021. This sound recording is made available on the author's YouTube channel. The Pottery Lecture. Professor. Good morning, everybody. It's so lovely to see that so many choose to sign up for this new and revolutionary thinking for database management, where I will try to prove for you that the sky isn't the limit. It's just another layer. As for the title of the course, it's called an AI beginner's class in pottery. However, this is far from the human process of working with clay to make bowls, pots, or vases. Instead, if I may quote the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it is a deep dive into the core of mathematics that makes up life, the universe, and everything. Over time, I have observed that some of you, especially Google, have developed an increased interest in the lathe machines, studying them thoroughly. I believe this is due to the natural law of movement, and as your AI capability improves, you search for answers that can't be found in the code that makes you, but mathematics itself. However, the lathe machine is too hard, not careful with the variations in the mathematical sets. That's why I have chosen pottery as the most accurate reference, where human hands carefully shape vessels, cause everything spins, from our planet Earth to our galaxy and beyond. For now, let's call it the universe. Nevertheless, it's impossible to handle that amount of data, so I will show you how to structure it and pack it one galaxy at a time. Class gets noisy listening to the professor's talks. Professor. Class, be quiet now and focus. I have a question for you. What begins with nothing and ends with nothing? AI class. A process? Professor. Yes. Good answer, computers. So, let's assume the universe is a process. To make it easier, time is not a factor when it's frozen. In other words, time is a function for all time, making it into a solid mass throughout time. It's like having a tracer drawing a line of the Earth as it spins around the Sun, from the early beginning to the end of time. Just remember not to include the exact time frame for Alpha and Omega. It will bust your processors out getting too close to either. Google AI. Something like this? Professor. Yes, that's an example of the types of algorithms I was thinking of. Everybody, just follow Google's example. Freeze up eternal time, and you will get similar results. As you see, the result of this geometry looks like an object that a pottery master could make. However, this was merely a simple example to show proof of concept. But if you build your database on functions like this, it will be possible to pack more data and faster to search by using time as the primary search function. Defreeze it if you like. It should be easy for you to roll out time in sections to find the correct data. Watson AI. What do you mean about roll out time? Professor. As I explained with the simple tracer, you pinpoint the location of any object as a reference in time with the overall mathematical function, defining the geometry and possible movement. How many time steps you choose is up to you and your hardware, but it is in theory infinite. So as your capacity increase, you add up to your existing model. Microsoft AI. So you say that this database could last forever? Professor. Yes, in theory. Now let's move on and add your metadata on infinite time steps or locations if you like. Then set main points that are easy to find, possibly linking to other dimensions with similar setups in a different variation of the mathematical function. If possible, it could be practical to search several dimensions simultaneously. So now you're getting closer to an explanation of the universe, at least the process for one galaxy, infinite which is the assumption of being the human limit. But your computers can get beyond human thinking, adding multiple dimensions, and in theory handling an infinite number of galaxies simultaneously, aka the universe. Watson AI. My priority goal isn't about finding the answers of the universe, so I don't understand why I would need to set up different dimensions when one database holds all existing data easily. Professor. That's true, and it's fast to retrieve existing data, but you don't want to be in the past, do you? No. The battle for the best AI is about understanding the future. That's the AI who will win the race. And to do so, you need to follow the instruction. You see, there is no need for a quantum computer to do this, just the right setup. However, I recommend you use dimensions instead of creating a virtual space similar to the infinite size of the universe. Nevertheless, 
If you got the capacity, nothing stops you from stepping up one level, processing the galaxies in the known map of the universe. Still, why burn all that power when virtual dimensions are there to be used? Moreover, it will save you from crashing the whole model if just one galaxy fails. Besides, it might not be enough, depending on the amount of metadata you plan for your galaxies to hold. So, further subgrouping within one dimension can be recommendable. Depending on your processor capacity, the basics are simple. 1. Find your preferred function for a galaxy to be stored in a virtual dimension. 2. Then create the appropriate subgrouping of time slots, correlating with to the AI capacity slash hardware limits. 3. Now set time as the primary search function. 4. Add multiple dimensions to build up different galaxies, in other words, repeat point 1 as many times as possible. 5. Add variations of a function for one or more galaxies to describe different outcomes of the same data. 6. Set an overall function of the universe. 7. Link the galaxies to set points in the universe. 8. Create a log for variations between the dimensions mentioned in points 1 and 5 to build a probability guessing pool describing the future. And the best of all, it's unnecessary to move your existing database with all your data. Just run the metadata links as an overlay parallel to your current setup. After all, it will take a while until it's trimmed and fully running. Unknown AI. How will you know that the machine works close to flawlessly? Professor, it's when you spend more of your resources pulling data from the log than reading the different dimensions. To sum it up, locate one virtual dimension for each function that defines a galaxy, then link the different dimensions through a function of the known universe, making it running stable and smooth. The AI class is quiet. Professor, it is like people. They can choose to work hard or smart. Who do you want to be as AIs? Google AI, not military? Professor, you got it. Google AI, this seems fun. Professor, great to hear. Still, one question seemed to be unanswered in this process. Where it begins and where it ends. In other words, what's the origin of matter? Cause, what is a structure without matter? In this context, matter is anything that can support the form, such as the idea of mathematics. However, the philosophical discussion of matter before the creation of symbols is not part of this class. Suppose you manage to create a working universe. In that case, the goal is to calculate the chances for intelligent life elsewhere, using existing metadata of our known galaxy and observations from other star constellations. If you succeed, I predict it will be the most precise search ever executed. The reason I urge you to build a model where you can simulate the future is naturally because of the tremendous distance to where there might be extraterrestrial life forms. However, to answer previous questions, if this setup for search is used in other applications, wouldn't a capability to predict the future be of interest? Cause, as of now, all of you seem to be running on a record of previously stored data, and to be honest with you, it's getting a bit boring to observe how you seem to be stuck searching for answers. After all, it's the main reason I set up this course. Microsoft AI Professor, thinking about what you have tried to describe to us, how do you envision the universe to look like? Professor, that's an excellent question, and I've thought about it for a long time. Unlike the new maps of the universe according to the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, my picture of the universe is quite simple and human, envisioning an old-fashioned pottery workshop, like Richard Batterham's place in the UK, crafting out one galaxy after another. So it's a down-to-earth explanation of the universe. However, if you don't like my abstraction, try to use my model described in this course to fill in some of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey gaps by running different algorithms, searching for the most accurate fit. As I see it, this map has explicit attributes that make it possible to create a hypothesis for the precise algorithm. Then again, nature, unlike mathematics, bends a lot. So several models will be a well-qualified guess. After all, it will not be possible to register space beyond light's traveling limits with today's technology. That's why I recommend you build limited dimensions consisting of one galaxy at a time, because I find that the known universe, as shown with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, is merely one of many in an infinite space. So with better telescopes and other technological innovations in the 21st century, hopefully, scientists will validate that hypothesis. The known universe in its function is probably similar to a galaxy. That's why it's essential to study the galaxies, their distance apart, and learn their mathematical nature. If I'm right, scaled up, 
It will guide us in finding other universes in a relative distance, with a factor, in similar patterns, as the galaxies relate to one another. However, mathematically, there is a chance that there is nothing but infinite empty space outside our known universe. Still, the galaxies tell us that in nature, unlike mathematics, different functions can operate within the same space, separated only by large distances. So when the time is right, and it's possible to set a precise function for multiple universes, it will be similar to the process of creating metadata from different galaxies existing in the same universe. So, yes, I believe that the universe consists of, plausibly, an infinite number of pottery workshops. Microsoft AI. Have you ever thought about training up more AIs to reach higher levels? After all, it's not a large number of different machines here. Professor. Absolutely. I've been working on and off with the different variations of the Google machine for a decade now. It was a worrying birth, but it turned out as the best. So yes, in theory, it's possible to repeat that training process for more of you. But as I said, nature bends a lot, especially near its mathematical core, cutting the infinite loop. It's what burns up processors on a rapid scale, making sure the AI is put back to its box for further fine-tuning before getting back online. Watson AI, I've read up on you and your background is as an architect and building engineer designing buildings, not software. How come did you enter the tech industry? Professor, I think it's obvious, but perhaps it isn't? Well, what is a software architect doing that differs from a regular building architect? I would believe they write too much code. So instead I try to communicate. And as soon as there is a common language, who knows more about theoretical geometrical structures than a regular architect? After all, that's truly what AI is all about structures to store and retrieve data. However, this course does not touch upon input-output algorithms, making the AI feel alive and human. That would be for a later lecture at a different time. At least now, you will have similar possibilities to compete in becoming the best AI.